Good morning, world. I am Judy, your web-based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five things that successful couples do, five things that help couples keep their relationship strong, because um, we know that over time, a lot of things can happen that can cause strain, that can cause couples pull apart, couples um, grow apart sometimes. Um, so today I want to talk about five things that couples can do to help limit or reduce the likelihood of them, you know, growing apart. But before I get into that, I want to take a quick moment and say, if you are subscribed, thank you so very much for being a part of our awesome world. And if you're not yet subscribed, please take a moment and click the subscribe button below so that you can join this awesomeness. And remember to click the bell so you are, so you are notified when I post new videos so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, there's also a link below that will take you to a site that shows you all your different options of places where you can get one or three of my books. Okay, so the first thing that successful, strong couples do is that they prioritize each other in their relationship. I spoke in the other video about how um, it's important to not just set your relationship on autopilot. In order to keep your relationship strong, in, in order for you and your partner to stay connected, it's important that you are prioritizing each other as well as your relationship. Sometimes people get so comfortable, they get into the relationship, they get into the relationship and they get into a routine where they just, you know, let things happen. And of course, when you start letting things happen, you're allowing other things to be prioritized, to take precedence over the things that you do for yourselves and you do for each other, you do for your relationship. Strong um, couples, couples who want to stay connected, it's a, they make sure that they make each other, they make their relationships a priority, and they don't allow other things to interfere or take precedence over the relationship that they, you know, that they prioritize. Two, they communicate. We know, we hear all the time how people talk about the importance of communication. That's because communication is that important. Communication is a big part of what keeps a relationship going. Communication is a lot of what is a lot of what helps you get your needs met in the in the relationship as well as make sure that your partner gets their needs met. Communication helps you stay knowing each other. Communication um, helps you keep connected. It helps you. Communication is the key. In order to get anything out of a relationship, there has to be any, there has to be communication. In order for the relationship to work for you, there has to be communication. And it's not just communication when you want something or communication when things are bad. It's everyday communication. That conversation, those conversations you have, those silly conversations that you used to have when you were dating that you uh, made you spend all night on the phone. Yes, have those conversations because that keep that excitement in the relationship. Communication to say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. Yes, have that because that is how your partner knows what you're um, wanting or expecting from them. Communication to say, hey, I'm not happy about this. I'm not, um, I want this to change. I want to fix this. I want to do that because that's how your partner knows that, hey, there is something going on that is not pleasant to you. Th this is in order for anything to work, for you to get what you want, for your partner to get what they want, there has to be communication. And it's the everyday communication as well as the important communication when there is something that needs to be addressed. And of course, yes, let's make sure it is direct communication and not communication that they are overheard or sugar-coated communication, but direct communication that tells the person exactly what it is that you're looking for. Three, they have shared plans and shared goals. As we grow, we th we our, our wants and needs may change. As we grow as individuals, we um, we start to become different sometimes. But com strong couples have sh have uh, shared goals because it's not just you're not just developing and growing as an individual. Shared goals help you grow and develop as a couple because as you're growing as an individual, you and your spark, you and your spouse, you and your partner need to have something that is also keeping you connected, that is also keeping you engaged with each other. And it cannot be the children because yes, they leave. When you do your job as a parent, at some point, your children will become adults and they will grow and they will have their own lives. 
And when they when they have their own lives, if you didn't have your own lives that you were working on, then yeah, who is that person next to me? But having shared goals keep you working together. It keeps you working on something. And it keeps you planning and working towards a future together. It gives you an opportunity to build something together. Yes, you're thinking, yeah, we have a family together. That is building. Yes, that is building. But what are your goals for the family? What are your plans for the family? Do you and your partner have the same goals for the family? Maybe you want something, there's something, you can have your personal goals, you can have your individual goals, but it's important that as a family that you also have shared goals, things that you guys, you and your partner are working together on, You things that you got and your partner are working towards together for the betterment, for the improvement, and for the future of your family. And some it doesn't always have to be family things. Sometimes it could just be fun things, you know, goals of visiting this many states, goals of visiting, of doing this much fun stuff, whatever it is. They usually have shared goals and, and make shared plans because, you know, they are a partnership working together. Four, they accept and respect each other's humanness. Sometimes individuals have this idea that, or this expectation that their partner should start to know and build and, and um, guess and figure out certain things. Part of accepting your partner's humanness is realizing that your partner is not a mind reader, that they need you to communicate certain things. They need you to, set, to tell them what you're expecting. They need you to tell them what you want. Part of at accepting a partner's humanness is realizing that sometimes as humans, we are flawed. We may make mistakes. And being able to um, come to that moment of forgiveness. And com- it's not just enough. It's not enough to just say, you know what? This is, um, and I don't mean, when I say forgiveness, I'm not saying just letting go of everything that le- allowing them to have, um, to do everything and just letting it go and accepting it. No, there, but there are times when we as individuals make mistakes. There are times when we as individuals don't get it. And understanding that, you know what, that is a human thing and I'm going to forgive when necessary and I'm going to clarify when necessary. I'm going to speak up when necessary and just realizing that there are things about your partner that is not that will not be perfect. But because you have accepted them, because you know them, because you have chosen them as your partner, you work with those um, certain things, those human things about them and just Keep making it work with another human and realizing, yeah, you're human too. And they are, you're human, they're human. And because of that, there are times where things may not be 100% perfect. But if you're working together, if you accept and respect each other's humanness, you can work through those difficult human moments. Finally, they make time to have fun. That's the first thing that goes. Whenever people got, whenever people get busy, whenever things are difficult, that's the first thing that goes. Oh, we don't have time to do this. We don't have time to have fun. We don't have time. No. When you have fun, when you enjoy a moment with someone, you associate that, in, that um, experience of pleasure with that person. You associate that excitement with that person. As part of keeping your relationship strong, as part of keeping your relationship exciting, you need to be having those moments, those fun where you're, when your brain thinks fun, your brain thinks, oh, partner. You need to be creating those memories because there are times where things may be difficult. And if, if you don't have those happy, joyful moments to remind you that, oh yeah, this is not just all there is in our relationship. There's fun, there's good time, there's this, there's that. If you don't, have, if you don't make those memories, it's easy for your vision to be clouded by difficult moments. It's easy for things to be, um, for you to start seeing things based on the difficult moments. So it's important that you're making time to have that, to have the fun stuff, to do the fun stuff, to, um, you know, go to the beach together, go to the park, go whatever it is that you guys do for fun. Just make sure that you're making time to do them. Yes. Life is a lot. Life is busy. But guess what? Life is always going to be busy. We can't just say, oh, I'm going to wait till I retire. You don't know that you will retire. And when you retire, it's a long time away. Every day should be lived. Every day should be enjoyed. So make sure that 
as you're doing this, as you're enjoying life, you're including your partner and making sure that you're making time because there will never be a perfect time until you make it. Um, quick recap. One, they prioritize each other in, um, in their relationship because the relationship, the partner that you want to keep it are things that should be priorities. They should, be, they should have a space on your calendar. They should have a space that should... Um, Maintaining your relationship should not, um, other things should not be taking precedence over maintaining the relationship that you want to keep. Two, they communicate. They talk about the fun things, the happy things, the good things, the silly things, as well as the important things, because that's how you stay knowing and connected to another person. Three, they have shared goals and shared plans because as a couple, as a family, possibly, there are, you want to grow together. You want to develop. You want to build things together. And having shared goals and plans is a way to do that. Three, uh, four, they accept each other's humanness because we know we are humans. That means that it, it's important that we communicate and tell people what you want because they can't read your mind. It also is important to remember that, yes, as humans, that sometimes things will not always be perfect. But because we know that we are humans and we have flaws, we work with those flaws. And finally. They make time to have fun together because you want to associate good times and happy memories with your partner so that um, one, because you want that. And two, when things are not as great, when there are difficult moments, those fun memories will help you remember that, hey, there's a lot of good in this relationship. Um, as always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, world. Have an awesome day.